You might recognize today's guests from the second season of the hit Netflix competition show Next in Fashion. Contestant James Ford wowed judges with his beautiful designs, but he wowed the rest of us in ways that go beyond his talent. On the show, James bravely opened up about his gender transition, paving the way for other LGBTQ plus members in the fashion industry. We're chatting with him about his remarkable impact and more. This is Advocate Now. James, thank you so much for being here. And people are loving the second season of Next in Fashion right now. How did you find out that you were going to be on the show? And what was your reaction? Um, you know, we we found out really like the weekend before the show started filming. Wow. Um, so when I, when I found out, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I've been telling people like, you know, a year ago, I was just a guy like sitting in a design office for like a, a very cool brand nonetheless, but like just sort of a regular um, guy about town and fashion. So the response has been like totally overwhelming and remarkable, really. How amazing with so many <laughs> talent design, talented designers out there, you know, it's easy to understand why the competition would feel so intense. Is there <laughs> anything that you can share about the challenges that, that might surprise fans? Um, I really, what you see is, I mean, it's like, it's just as challenging as how it looks on, on the episodes, you know, um, I've, I've only actually seen episode one so far. Um, so, but it's, uh, it's just as intense as it seems. It's, it's maybe even more intense. It feels quite intense when you're in it. Um, I think, uh, the time constraints are like, you know, they're very real and you, you're trying as fast as you can to sew different things. And, um, you know, it's like, by the way, Gigi Hadid and Tan France are going to stop by and chat with you. So like, no pressure, be cool. Um, so it's it's also like a lot of fun. I want beauty. They're using breast flowers and thrifted garments. I do want over the top. I love the hand. Can we ask if I can wear this? Nope. Light bulb. I wanted to ask you about working with Gigi and Tan because have there been any takeaways from working so closely with two people who are obviously well-respected in the fashion industry? Yeah, I think the takeaway is um, they're both so genuine and authentic and honest people that you sort of are inspired to bring that to your designs. Um, I don't think either one of them have ever, you know, um, tried to be anyone they're not, you know. And so when they say, this is good, keep going, we believe in you, we get it, do more of this, you you trust that. I think the relationship um between the hosts and us was like a, a really strong sense of trust. And I think that that sort of comes through. Well, in the fourth episode of the season, we see a different side of some of the designers. You know, you were all asked to create looks based on your childhood. You very bravely and authentically opened up about your transition. Why did you want to share that? Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks for asking. Um, that was really my whole point of going on this show. My designs are cool, sure, great. Everyone, everyone seems to like it. That's very positive and everything. But it's not really about like whether you're making a navy jacket or a red shirt or whatever. That 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 was of no consequence really. Um, the most important part to me of doing this show was to show people who probably felt now how I felt when I was younger that um, that that's not normal. Um, you don't have to feel that way if clothes are you know, that distressing to you, you know, there's other people who felt that way and who have gone through this and who have come up the other side as adults that have like happy, full lives of friends and family who love them and accept them and encourage them. And then, and you're going to be, you're going to be great. You know, there's nothing wrong with you. And, and so that's what I wanted to show people. Cause like, you know, I didn't see a trans person on TV, much less in the fashion space till I was an adult, well into my adulthood. And so that's really what it was all about um, for me. And you've been so real and vulnerable throughout the the show. You know, you even shared how difficult it was for you to get dressed prior yeah. to your transition. Has designing been a way for you to almost take that power back? Absolutely, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Um, because getting dressed was so terrible for me for so many years, after that many repetitions, I would say of like doing it wrong. And when I finally started to get it right, 
um, it felt really great. And that showed me that like, I wasn't doomed to always be uncomfortable in clothes. It didn't have to be a fight with myself every morning. Um, and so I think now I've sort of like mastered it, like that 10,000 hours thing, that repetition thing, when you do things over and over and over, you get really good at it. So now that I've gotten really good at it, the only thing I want to do is like share this, like share the silhouettes and different types of fabrics that I've learned that have helped me sort of come into my own. I mean, clothing really like led my transition in a way. You were really focused on suiting in the beginning. You still create custom suits, but why was that almost a jumping off point for you in terms of your career? Yeah, um, formal formal wear as a category is is tough for a lot of people, and it was extremely hard for me. And I think one of the saddest things that I still try to like deal with in my life is that all of my past memories, um, big family milestones, graduations, family weddings, everything like that to me is just is is useless uh, and you know it's not like it was important and i'm glad i went through all that but i can't look back at those photos and not feel pretty uncomfortable and so you know i i don't hide from my past or run from it but i certainly wish i would have a photo of me in a suit as a little kid at some of these events to look back on and say oh like look at this cute little kid you know but I, just, I still find it a little bit humiliating to this day, even though I'm 32 years old and like, you know, totally okay and everything now. Um, but I still found those photos really difficult. Yeah, there's so much trauma attached to it that can take years or decades to overcome. We, we all carry trauma with us for different reasons. So it's completely yeah. understandable. But I know there are so many in the trans and LGBTQ plus community who are inspired and touched by your journey. Do you have any advice for someone just starting to come to terms with who they are? Yeah, I would say um, if you're just starting to come to terms with who you are, um, take it slow try on a lot of different things um, not just clothing, but uh, you know, try on different names, try on different pronouns. Um, I started you just doing small things like just wearing men's deodorant instead many, many, many years ago. And I was like, Oh, that's, that's an easy way to cost, you know, three or four bucks at, at Rite Aid or whatever. Um, so I would just say like, take it really slow and, and uh, taste test a lot of different things that work for your lifestyle. So, um, you know who you are at heart. I don't think that there's anything to be found out. It's just, it, you, you just have to discover, you know, where the, your comfortability is with certain things. And so I think like, you know who you are down at, at deep down and um, yeah, just it'll, it'll come out naturally. I think if you give yourself some time. And, on the flip side, do you have any advice for family members, friends, and how they can help those who are going through a transition or something of this nature in their lives? Yeah. Um, one really nice thing that my cousin actually just mentioned to me like this week during all this excitement is she was like, you know, I, I saw you cringe when you would get gifts, Christmas gifts that were like dresses. And we all knew it for you, but we just wanted you to get there on your own. And so like, we were ready for you in open arms whenever, whenever you were ready, you know? And so like that, knowing that I would just want to share that to as many people as possible and say like, if you're putting it on your own self to be a certain way, because you think your family needs you to be a certain way, consider the possibility that they are waiting with open arms for you to be exactly who you are because once you're your, your authentic self like everything opens up for you you're going to be more relaxed you're going to be more more happy and smiley and and things just i don't know things start going your way and um you get to live your real life that's all it is is um getting the opportunity to be yourself for the short time you have here so my my recommendation would be um if you are a friend or a family member of someone who is trans to let them come to you. Um, you can make it a safe space though. And, and let them know that, you know, you're accepting of all different kinds of identities and things like that. Um, so basically just like leave the, leave the door open, you know, leave the gate open yeah. like when they're ready and they decide how and when and what they want to say. And you'll just be there for them. James, you are incredible. Thank you so much for talking with us. Everyone, make sure you check out James in the second season of Next in Fashion, which is on Netflix now. Thank you so much for talking with us and good luck with everything. 
Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I'm Sonia Baghdadi. Thanks for watching and advocating. For more stories and content like this, visit advocate.com and advocatechannel.com.